Hey there YouTube, this is the Redstone Warrior here, wanting to get back to Minecraft a little bit. Uh, basically, I have done a couple things, not too many though, since my last video, which was quite a while ago. I've been very busy, and uh, I just wanted to get back a little bit. I did, I made some pretty cool things and I want to show you it. Uh, I'm making this lab right now, it's a giant, I'm not sure if I'll use it, it's basically more space, but decorated a little bit. Uh, here it is. Pistons, huge thing. Uh, really did a lot for Minecraft. Okay, here's a 2i2 7 piston elevator. It has a torch on each, it looks pretty neat, and it has a torch on each side. Side. Down there, there are also torches in special places, but not getting into that. It can be remotely deactivated, along with many things here. Uh, you hit the button, and boom, it sends you up and opens the doors. That's the surface access. Uh, each button can both... It takes a while for it to go down. Not too long, though. Uh, it need, it takes longer because it needs a sequence, special sequence to move down. It's stunned, by the way. And each button can both call and send the elevator. Okay, so here's the lab. Yeah, pretty big so far. Uh, here's the entrance. Uh, basically, I have the elevator, a piston clock, which I'll explain in a minute, a C uh, I readed my CPU, I have some, and I have some uh, RAM in the corner. But first, I've been making these ascenders and descenders like mad. Basically, this descender is just some water, and this, this moves you up. It, the pistons literally pop out and push you up as fast as you can. You stand in the center, and boom, you're flying up. Yeah, not much explanation there. Very fast. I also have uh, built these mine minecart senders. Here, I'll show you. Get in, you click this button. It takes a second to warm up. We are flying upwards. Almost there. So what happens is you get here, you jump out of your minecart, and you step on this plate as you're getting out, so I would just step there, and it sends it back down for the next person. Uh, and this will give you access to the sky labs, I refer to them as. Uh, the lower area is going to be for huge projects like the CPU or the clock. Up here is going to have a lot of little projects. I have yet to build a place, but yeah. Okay, piston clock. I have, uh, here's the top view of the circuitry, I'll give you a brief explanation. Basically, those are uh, binary to seven segment display decoders. Uh, they are hooked up to incrementers, which is basically a memory cell hooked up to a uh, half adder with an, with an input of one. Uh, what happens is every single time one of one of the units says, "Oh, I'm done. I'm resetting," it goes on to the next one. So, it, so uh, when the second hand gets to zero, it's basically a loop. When it gets to zero, it will, uh, or when it gets to nine and then hits zero, it will tell the ten hand to uh, go. And that's what happened. Uh, I'm going to have a ton of bubbles up here with neat stuff. I'm hoping to move this to a multiplayer server soon, like a popular one, maybe. Anyways, so yeah, this is a descender in the center of that stack. It's all pretty neat. Okay. The piston clock, a little more in detail. Okay, uh, I did a bad thing here. I usually, when you leave it, you need to uh, reset this thing or turn it off whenever you leave it, so it doesn't just uh, try to keep going. Because repeaters, if they're on or if they're about to transfer anything and the thing is reset, they just won't work. They just, they just say they're about to transfer, but they don't do a thing. So you can push this down, and it will turn off the colons and the second hand. The second hand is actually just a clock, like it's a circular loop of repeaters, unlike the rest of this. I just destroyed some redstone. Silly, silly me. Uh, okay. Here's how it is. You have add 10 seconds. These all work, whether or not the clock is running. Add a minute. Add 10 minutes. Add an hour. Uh, you'll see there's not enough space for another, or there's not a ton of space over there. Well, that is, 
it's that uh for the hour hand once you get to 12 all you really need is the one in the corner so anyways so this hold that up hit this button to start the clock and there you go it is pretty neat actually it counts on time it uh in terms of staying on time it really varies depending on lag conditions because there's nothing that's set to real world time in minecraft it's all relative so you may have to adjust it depending on lag conditions anyway so it increments perfectly i found the seven segment display made of pistons is extremely effective and yeah these units are actually really modular it doesn't look like i copied and pasted them but i did a fair amount of it the reason this one is uh, pushed back over here is because for the 12 i was lazy and i just did this if you can see what gi did here uh, i just had it go to the one flying redstone okay here is my cpu uh the old one i had or basically was i thought it was a little too big so i tried to condense it using uh pistons and i color coded it while i was at it uh, i have to move along otherwise i'm going to run out of time uh, basically, th this uses pistons. It is about a quarter the size, so it's about a sixteenth the size of the one made by uh, the Internet FTW. Uh, it needs some control wiring I haven't made yet. Green is for a bus; it carries information from one place to another. Yellow is for memory circuit; is a memory circuit. Here is a register. There's the register, and there's the incrementer. Light blue means it's calculating. Here's the uh, incrementer for the PC. Down here's the ALU, and red means it's muxing. Okay, over here we have a 16 byte RAM. It's pretty fast, very compact, four blocks wide, or four blocks long, two blocks wide per uh, byte. So yeah, this is 16 byte RAM, which is a bit of a little bit overkill. Most computers uh, only take eight byte, or eight bit, bleh, eight bits per the byte. Uh, here's the decoder. Okay, I'm going to be moving to another world, but that world is extremely unstable because it has far too many men. Yeah, redstone things in it but basically i'm going to be showing you a rom unit which is or 16 of them stacked on top of each other and it's going to have a decoder in the center and 16 outputs and i'll show you it yeah. oh i'll show that in a second here's a neat little display i have sorry if i'm uh, shoving all this down your throat it's impractical but it does work and it's easily programmable i don't think i'll be using it but, uh, it, it's neat, it just can't be read if you have too complex of words. Uh, I'm going to be building a 16 by 16, uh, maybe bigger, up to 24 by 24, uh, 16 color printer, because there's a challenge in getting all 16 colors to be able to be programmed and put in there, and also if I build bigger than 12 blocks, I have to have a special array for the printing, because, uh, p one piston can only push 12 blocks, so... Most sprites, you can't make as many sprites with that size. Okay, so crashed. I'm gonna go back to it. But you can't make most sprites, even small ones, on a 12 by 12 colored thing. Uh, so I'm going to make it at least 16 by 16. It will be a challenge, but I'll make it. Okay, so logging back in. So here's the printer so far. What this is, I haven't hooked up a few things, but this is selecting one out of 16 colors, this array here. It's actually pretty nifty. Uh, I, otherwise, I would need the circuitry required to make a 16 piston elevator. Literally. <laughs> That's actually a direct translation. Okay. Uh, here's the ROM. Basically, you input the, uh, the address into the center. You need to put to all of them. And then you need to mux the outputs. It's not hooked up yet, but each one of these is independent at the moment. Each layer and each side. Actually, this is currently 32 output per input, but it's going to be muxed out. So, yeah. This will be instruction for any computer, not just mine. Uh, so I have RAM, ROM... Yeah, I'm pretty much set. Uh, I am considering making a piston screen where... Unfortunately, pistons, you can't... Mm, I've been considering it, but unless it's vertical, you... I'd have... I think I'd do it in 2x2 uh, two two chunks. But it's a thought, because piston screens are very easily read. Okay, so that's it for the moment. I think I need to finish the CPU. I need to uh, 
Oh, sorry, crashed. I need to finish the CPU, the 2D printer. I need to move stuff into that uh, new laboratory. And I'm going to look into a piston screen. Well, this is the Redstone Warrior saying thanks for watching and definitely more to come.